Hello and welcome back to LDT 3135, which is Practical Project Management. I'm Dr. Tim Boylo, and in this unit, I will provide a brief introduction to project management, review instructional design models, and talk a little bit about Agile frameworks for project management. So let's get started. Here's our agenda for this module. As you can see, we have a fair amount of material to cover, beginning with an overview of project management, the elements of project management expertise, competencies required of a project manager, a look at the agile design process and the use of models, the difference between agile and waterfall design frameworks, an agile mindset for project management, the scrum framework for agile project management, a sample schedule of Scrum Sprint events, and we'll finish with a quick look at next steps. In the first module, we provided a definition of project management. To, fair, to paraphrase, we can say that project management is a set of processes to guide the purposeful application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to activities for planning, executing, managing, and measuring performance against a predefined set of requirements for some new product, service, or result. Project management is not new. In fact, it has been in use for hundreds of years. We use project management to deliver successful project outcomes. For this class, we have identified an ebook product as an outcome. Other outcomes could be designing a new course, producing a job aid, implementing a new process, or completing a sprint. The common denominator is that the outcome is something that did not previously exist. Projects may be undertaken by an individual or a team, depending on the scope of the project, with most projects made up of a product owner, development team, process expert, and other stakeholders. All projects have constraints. The primary constraints are cost, quality, and time. All three of these constraints must be maintained in equilibrium for successful project management. In software development, there's an old saying that says, you can have it fast, good, or cheap. Pick two. The professional practice of project management requires proactive and ongoing risk planning and mitigation to deliver outcomes that are on time, within budget, meet quality standards, and deliver on interim product project milestones through effective and efficient use of project resources. Another challenge is that project constraints are all interdependent within the project plan. For example, a change in scope may pose new risk to cost, timing, and quality. Similarly, a change in timing in one task or activity may make a critical resource unavailable during the time it is needed, leading to an overall slip in a key deliverable schedule. There are a myriad of skills and competencies required for effective project management that must be present within the project management team. Recall from our last discussion, these are fully articulated in the 49 competencies that are included in the PMI Project Management Book of Knowledge, or PMBOK. In addition, there are some generalizable areas of project management expertise that include, first, is the ability to apply project management standards, along with knowledge of specific regulations or laws that may be relevant, depending on the project scope. Application knowledge may also include subject matter expertise. This does not mean that the project manager must be a content expert in a project domain, as long as at least one member of the project team possesses subject matter expertise related to the content or technology being used to produce the project outcome. Next, Understanding the project environment from an LDT perspective means identification of the learning space and the practice space. The project environment is also defined by the culture, social, political, and language diversity present among the learners and other stakeholders. Finally, interpersonal skills should be modeled by the project manager as well as the members of the team to include communication, leadership, negotiation, and problem-solving skills. As we'll see in the next couple of slides, it's worth noting that there are many similarities between the practice of project management and the practice of instructional design. 
The PMI Talent Triangle recognizes that in addition to technical project management skills represented by the 10 knowledge areas and 49 competencies of the PMBOK standard, effective project managers also require leadership skills and business intelligence. Technical project management represents the knowledge, skills, and behaviors needed to be an effective project manager. In practice, this means being able to, to correctly apply the competencies identified in the standard two different types of projects. Leadership represents the knowledge, skills, and behaviors that are needed to guide, motivate, and direct a team in order to achieve the business goals and outcomes of, for the project. Strategic and business management represent the business intelligence associated with your discipline that is gained through experience, continuing education, as well as industry certifications from professional organizations like ATD and ISPI. As we discussed in the previous module, you see many implicit parallels between the discipline of instructional design and the practice of project management that are evident in most instructional systems design models. Simply stated, instructional design is the systemic and systematic creation of instructional materials. The practice of instructional design goes beyond simply creating teaching materials through careful consideration of how students learn and what materials and methods will most effectively help individuals achieve predefined learning outcomes. The principles of instructional design consider how educational tools should be designed, created, and delivered to any learning group, from K-12 students to adult learners across all industry sectors. In the context of instructional design, a process is defined as a series of predefined steps that are required to reach an end result. If we consider the project management process groups in the PMI standard, namely initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and closing, with the steps in ADDI, which are analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation, we begin to see alignment in how each seeks to organize work using steps within a process framework in order to produce some outcome or change. Each iterative process step within a design phase produces some incremental work product or output. A model is defined as a specific instance of a process that can be imitated or emulated. In other words, a model seeks to personalize the generic into distinct functions for a specific context, depending on the product, service, or result to produce by the project. In this class, we'll be focusing on agile design approaches and specifically on the use of a particular framework used in project management called Scrum. Agile places emphasis on rapid prototyping, testing, and iteration. It was originally proposed to improve software design processes. Agile methods focus on user-centered design, bringing the end user into the design process frequently. Working contextually and iteratively can help clients see the value of a proposed design solution and understand better how and if it will function as needed. The basic tenets of Agile include continuous cycles, small, high-functioning, collaborative teams, use of multiple methodologies, flexible, continuous evolution, and customer involvement. In contrast, waterfall design frameworks follow a linear, stepwise fashion, treating the problem as known and unchanging. The waterfall model is a sequential design process in which progress is seen as flowing steadily downwards, like a waterfall, through the phases of requirements, design, implementation, verification, and maintenance. A waterfall approach to project management is characterized by sequential linear steps, upfront planning and in-depth documentation, contract negotiation, best, it's best for simple and unchanging projects, and close project manager involvement. Let's take a closer look at Agile as a mindset for project management. Chapter 2 in the Agile Practice Guide provides an excellent overview of the Agile mindset for project management. The Agile mindset uses iterative, incremental, and Agile approaches for projects that involve new or novel tools, techniques, materials, or application domains, 
making it ideally suited to the practice of LDT. The Manifesto for Agile Software Development outlines four values that are represented in all Agile frameworks, namely, individuals and interactions are valued over processes and tools, a working product over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and responding to change over following a plan. The 12 clarifying principles are provided in the text as well as on the Agile Manifesto website. These are worth your time to review as they will be modeled in our work throughout the semester. An Agile approach to project management represents the embodiment of the Agile mindset, values, and principles. All Agile approaches, including the Scrum framework we'll be using in this class, share common roots and are fully aligned with the Agile mindset, values, and principles. Scrum is an Agile framework for project management in which people address complex adaptive problems while productively and creatively delivering products of the highest possible value. Scrum teams are self-organizing and the members choose how best to accomplish their work rather than being directed by others outside the team. The team model in Scrum is designed to optimize flexibility, creativity, and productivity. There are three Scrum team roles. The product owner is responsible for maximizing the value of the product resulting from work of the development team and is solely responsible for managing the product backlog. In this course, the instructor will play the role of the product owner. The development team consists of professionals who do the work of potentially delivering a reusable increment of the product at the end of each sprint. Each member of your group in this class is a member of the development team. The Scrum Master is a servant leader for the Scrum team. The Scrum Master helps those outside the Scrum team understand which of their interactions with the Scrum team are helpful and which aren't. Each team member will gain experience by serving in the role of Scrum Master by rotating the role for each sprint. We use events referred to as sprints in Scrum to create regularity and to minimize the need for meetings not defined in Scrum. All sprints are time-boxed events with each sprint lasting less than a month. In this class, sprints will last for one week with exception of the first sprint, which is two weeks in duration. Once a sprint begins, its duration is fixed and cannot be shortened or lengthened. Sprints can be canceled, however, if the sprint goal becomes obsolete. The work to be performed in the sprint is determined in the sprint planning session. The plan is created via the collaborative work of the entire Scrum team. Sprint planning is time boxed to a maximum of eight hours for a one month sprint. In this course, the weekly class meeting will facilitate the sprint planning period and should take no more than one to two hours, covering the work to be done in the sprint and how the sprint goal will be accomplished. The sprint goal is an objective set for the sprint that can be met through the implementation of the product backlog. For our purposes, the product backlog consists of the content for each unit and the assignments listed in the syllabus, which are aligned with the objectives for this course. The Daily Scrum is a 15-minute time-boxed event for the development team. The Daily Scrum is held every day of the sprint to review progress toward the sprint goal and to confirm that progress is trending toward completing the work in the sprint backlog. As we obviously do not meet every day for this class, the Daily Scrum will be conducted asynchronously, facilitated by a discussion forum or other method agreed to by the team. A sprint review is held at the end of the sprint to inspect the incremental product deliverable and adapt the product backlog if needed. During the sprint review, the Scrum team and stakeholders collaborate on lessons learned from the work that was done in the sprint. In this class, the sprint review will occur at the beginning of the class meeting just prior to planning the next sprint. 
So, for example, Sprint 1 will cover Modules 2 and 3 for this class. Therefore, the Sprint review for Sprint 1 will occur on the first day of Module 4, just prior to the Sprint planning session for Sprint 2. Note that we will have a total of 10 sprints in this class, with the final sprint occurring during Module 12. The Sprint Retrospective is an opportunity for the Scrum team to reflect on the work accomplished during the sprint and create a plan for improvements to be enacted during the next sprint. The purpose of the Sprint Retrospective is to inspect how the last sprint went with regards to people, relationships, process, and tools, to identify and order the major items that went well along with opportunities for improvements, and to create a plan for implementing improvements to the way the Scrum team does its work. The sprint retrospectives will provide the basis for your individual and group evaluation assignment that is due at the end of the semester. Scrum artifacts represent the work or value to provide transparency opportunities for inspection and adaptation for all sprints. These include the product backlog, which is an ordered list of everything that is known to be needed in the product. It is the single source of requirements for all work associated with the product or project. The product backlog lists all features, functions, requirements, and enhancements including fixes and changes to be made in future releases, as well as acceptance criteria used to confirm that the product increment is done. The product backlog is analogous to the project charter and detailed in the project management plan assignments, which you will be completing for this class. The sprint backlog is the set of product backlog items that have been selected for the sprint plus a plan for delivering the product increment, thus realizing the sprint goal. The sprint backlog is analogous to the project milestones identified in a project schedule assignment that you'll also be completing for this class. Clearly, there is much more to the Scrum framework than we have covered in this class, particularly in a single slide. You should, however, now have a picture of the roles, events, and artifacts that we'll be working with in this class as we learn about and apply Agile methods to managing projects using the Scrum framework. I wanted to close out this section on project management introduction with an illustration of what your daily schedule for a one-week Scrum sprint might look like. This shows each of the sprint events we've talked about, including sprint planning, daily Scrum stand-up meetings, Sprint Review, and Sprint Retrospective. The reference to story time on Wednesday is tied to the use of user stories in Sprint, which is a method for documenting product requirements from the user's perspective. As we approach the end of this presentation, please make sure that you review all course materials for Module 2 and complete the activities in Module 2, Part 3. Take a look at and read through the supplemental materials on Scrum that I've added to the Scrum Resources module, and complete all associated readings for Module 3 that are listed in the course syllabus schedule. That brings us to an end of the presentation. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. Until next time, this is Dr. Tim Boileau wishing each of you a pleasant learning experience. I'll see you online and in our virtual classroom next week.